Um, I was wondering who one might consider the, the best Spanish general of the of the war. Um, I mean, best is it, it? It's a rather vague category, isn't it? I mean, should we say perhaps more most successful or something like that? Very difficult. Um, it may it may be easier to it may be easier to su suggest the the, uh, the the a few a few names. <laughs> it, even that's difficult. Um, mm -hmm. The best commander, and I know this is going to be very co controversial, um, to my mind, and it may not say a whole lot about, about Spanish generals, but to my mind, the best commander the Spaniards had was Cuesta. Yeah, I think, he, uh, I, think I would also have chosen Cuesta. Yeah. Um, Castaños was a, a much more pleasant individual, but he was he was possessed of much less energy and was capable of, of making the most most egregious mistakes. Blake or, or Blake as as as, as yeah. call him. Blake was very timid, very irresolute. Um very, very lacking in self-confidence, um, a pretty dismal figure. Mm -hmm. Palafos was just horrendous. Um, La Romana, La Romana is kind of, is usually, you know, favourite general as far as many British authors are concerned, and it appears to be you know, Wellington's favourite Spanish general. Mm -hmm. um, Not, not a good field commander. I was going to ask why. I, I've often wondered, you know, what special things he did to deserve the praise of the British, but um... uh, not a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's chiefly the fact that the, the, the Royal Navy rescued him from Denmark. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it is just that, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, and he, he becomes Britain's pet general. Mm -hmm. um, now. Yes, he, he leads the Spanish division in, in Denmark. Been, it'd been sent to Denmark yeah. in 1907. Um, he leads it in revolt and he gets it across to the island of Funen where the, where the French can't get at it and the Royal Navy comes along and picks him up. There is some evidence that he was forced into it by, by various subordinates. Some evidence, some yeah. evidence. And there's certainly evidence that when he got back to Spain, he was absolutely furious at what he'd found. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, he, he denounces the situation at considerable length and engages in a, in a variety of um, acts of political intrigue, mm -hmm. undermines the authority of the government. He, I mean, he's, he's, he is not good news. Definitely not um, as solid as Quester. I mean, I mean, I mean, Cuesta was was a difficult character. Um, he wasn't a brilliant general, but in many ways he was pretty straightforward. Yeah. And 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 he was, you know, he was committed to fighting. Um, mm -hmm. Now the, the the other name that comes to mind, which I suppose. Uh, but obviously, I've been talking about army commanders. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, a name that comes to mind, which some people will have heard of, um, and this is certainly a topic that we ought to talk about, um, is Francisco Espothimina, as he's known. Yeah. Um, the the, the guerrilla general. Yes. Now, we, we, we do need to talk about the guerrillas. Um, yeah. Francisco Espothimina, um, he was another East peasant, 
mm-hmm. in Navarre is province of northern Spain, next to Pyrenees. He was a, a, a peasant um, who joined, he actually volunteered for the, for the army in 1808. Um, he is, it's all very misty. He appears then to have deserted. Um, and as a deserter, well, he was probably a bandit. Fair enough. Uh, becomes a bandit. Um, now, I mean, what you've just said about the economy of Spain, it's not really surprising, really, is it? <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, well, I mean band- banditry was rife yeah. uh, prior to the war. And I'll, I'll go on to talk about banditry. Um, a bit when it comes to guerrillas, because banditry mm-hmm. is central. Um, anyway, he he appears to have decided. He was a very intelligent bandit. He appears to have decided that if he just you know if if he just if he just continued to be a bandit, you would end up on the scaffold somewhere. Yeah, and that, you know there's no future in it. Mm-hmm. He realised that the war offered men like him, essentially adventurers, nobody's on the make, they offered him a real opportunity. Mm -hmm. What he does um, is he turns his band of outlaws into a guerrilla band. Now he's a he's a pretty tough he really is a very tough and nasty piece of work mm-hmm. and he starts bumping off all the other bandit leaders <laughs> in the area and 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 taking over their forces okay it's very cozy and nice um, trip, all right yep oh, it's, it's, yeah <laughs> and, he, and he accuses them of being oh it's totally ironic because he's a bandit yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 so you know he accuses them of being bandits and he, and he <laughs> executes them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and so you know he acquires their followers and so forth. Um, now his name wasn't Espothimina. Uh, um, his name was that his name was actually Francisco Espoth Ilundain. Um, and he, he he calls himself Espothimina now. There was another guerrilla leader in Navarre who was called Mina. His mm-hmm. surname was Mina. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a very, very distant connection of, of this buff, like second cousin four times removed or something. Um, just at the right moment, he gets captured by the French. Is there some suggestion that this capture was not quite accidental? <laughs> Is there some suggestion that Espoth had something to do with it? Um, you might think that, but I could not possibly comment. It's very diplomatic of you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Espoth emerges as the, you know, the chief honcho in Navarre. Um... He takes his, he's usually said his, Mina was his nephew, but he wasn't his nephew. He's, he right. takes his distant relative's name, that's why he becomes a spoth in Mina. Uh-huh. And so he's you know, mm-hmm. benefiting from his prestige. Mm-hmm. And he forms this, this uh, guerrilla band, and he very quickly realises, in common with another of, another of, a number of other guerrilla commanders, that military organisation is the key. Mm-hmm. You needed military organisation. You fought more effectively. You had a better, and, and if you fought more effectively, you'd win more more actions and get more followers. You'd also get government recognition. Mm-hmm. If he could get a commission and start rising up the ranks of the officer corps, which he thought was a splendid idea. It allowed him to control his troops more easily. Mm-hmm. They couldn't just come and go as they wanted, if they, which was the case of their civilians. If mm-hmm. they were soldiers, 
they were subject to discipline. Mm-hmm. And finally, um, it, it, it meant that the French would, would you know, if they captured him or his men, they'd treat them as prisoners of war rather than shooting them out of hand. Exactly. Because they're regular soldiers. Mm-hmm. So he decides that he's going to transform his band into what eventually becomes a division of regular troops. It's incorporated into the army and he leads the French a merry dance in Navarre, um, in western parts of Aragon in, and in the southern parts of the Basque provinces. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting, he's sitting astride the French line of communications, the main road to Madrid. And so he causes a lot of trouble. Mm. Now, certainly, he was pretty effective as the commander of a flying column of regular troops. Mm-hmm. In that sense, he was very, very good. Mm-hmm. Did he have the training, the ability to be an army commander? Well, the one time he is an army commander in 1823 makes a fearful hash of things when the, when the French invade again in 1823. Yeah, right. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now, inherent in what I've been saying about Espothimina um, is my very, very revisionist view of the Spanish guerrillas. Mm-hmm. We've already said We've already seen that I simply don't buy the notion of this great popular crusade against the French. Yes. That's very much an invention in 19th century Spanish historiography. Mm-hmm. The Guerrilla War too is in many ways, in many ways, an invented struggle. 